going on everybody this is island hopper tv coming to you from tirana albania this is the capital of albania i arrived last night crossing the border in a seven hour adventure from montenegro that video is over on my other channel vert cam if you guys wanted to check that out ask me for a link and i'll drop it Yeah, this is called Skanderberg Square, right here in the city center. As I'm on my way to Greece to meet my friend, who will be arriving very soon. By the time you see this video, I will be in Athens. So Albania is not yet a member of the European Union but it is a European country. Just north of Greece, to the west of North Macedonia, to the east of Montenegro, and to the south, I believe, of Serbia, or is it Bosnia? Don't quote me on that. Kosovo, it's disputed. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna kinda cruise around here. I'm gonna take you guys to the main drag here in town they accept either euro or the local Albanian currency the language they speak here is Albanian so get your Google Translate ready get your currency converter ready when you come here look at these mountains in the background I'll just tell you real quick the population of Tirana is around 420,000. I will say this, the stuff that I was hearing in other countries before I got here made me a bit hesitant to get out here and explore it. Uh, people in the other Balkans countries, I guess, beef with each other so they don't say positive things about other countries, although they all seem to agree that Croatia is pretty good. And Montenegro, I've talked to people who like Montenegro. I personally like both Croatia and Montenegro, and I'm finding Albania to be pleasant and friendly. But when I first got here, I was a little bit tense because people were saying certain things. But anyway, and you can see they've got some kebab, looks like falafel, Donner. Yes. Good food, good food. Okay, giving you guys a idea of the sights and sounds out here. Here's like a little market. Let's see, is there anything I need? Kind of need a suitcase, maybe. But no, because... I don't want to check anything in. Could go for a new shirt. New shirts. They have some nice clothes, actually. Ah, oh, boxers. I do need some boxers. Let's see here. Hmm. Unlike most markets, no one's trying to sell me anything here. I'm a willing participant. Hmm. All right. So, it's good prices in that uh, market there. This is in between the two main streets to the west of the square. Okay, so I am now on Mislim Shiri, you can see. And Zella is the road where the market is. 
So I'm actually looking for some food now. Man, this camera that I have, it's been with me for a while. It's recorded a lot of footage on this trip. <laughs> I think I've been to now like 18 countries on this particular journey that I'm on. It's actually quite a bit. I do need a haircut actually, so haircut, um, some food, so it's on my agenda. Some suits. Yeah, Tirana is actually turning out to be a nice place. I like it. You know, that's the thing with travels. You listen to people and they'll tell you things that aren't true. And it's nothing against those people, it's just they don't know. They just see the news, they just read certain things, and then they think it's true. It's what travel does for you. You actually get out there and you see it for yourself, and then you can make the decision on your own if it's good. But from my experience, people I've interacted with here in Tirana. Friendly, kind, nice, easy going. I don't feel threatened at all. That's good. This is more of the ritzy end that I'm on right now. Same road. Just you can see they've got like polo, sunglass stores. The weather outside I'll tell you right now. Okay, so it's 33 degrees Celsius, it's going to be as hot as 36 today, and it's currently 90 degrees, it's going to be as hot as like 96 or something around there. Could be because of the trees, but just walking around here, it doesn't even feel as hot as like Prague or Vienna did when, it was, when I was there, but it could just be these trees providing shade. Hotel Bar, Villa Sereno. Yeah, I wish I could stay a little longer in Albania now that I've been here for 24 hours already. I'm enjoying it. It's just I have to get to Greece to meet my friend. Once I meet up with him, it'll be interesting to see where exactly we go. But, oh, see a barbershop. Should we do it? I guess it'll depend on how busy they are. And if they take Euros or if they take Albanian. Luxury. Uh, Barberia, Italia. All right. All right. Barber Italia. Doing the haircut. Barber shop in Tirana. See the quality. I would grave that one uh, about a 10. His name's Arjid. And uh, yeah, you know the road we're on. Let's see here. Stop in and tell him what's up. Good quality. He's quick too. He moves fast. He's not, he's not messing around. But now we got to find somewhere to eat. Where shall we eat? 
Let's see, Donner, they got Slovaki, but I'll save that stuff for Greece because they'll for sure have Slovaki in Greece. Here's Sel. Okay, so I went and got some vitamin C and magnesium and the girl that works at the pharmacy there, she told me that she thinks the beaches in Albania are better than the beaches in Greece, down in the south by the Albanian Riviera. Could be a little bit of a uh, bias because of the home country, but I believe her. Okay, now we got some rain coming. Burgers, fries. I don't mind the rain, actually. It was a hot one earlier. Okay, so I've stopped here at the Taverna Amazona. I'm assuming this is, like, Amazon food, but that's a Greek salad, and that's Greek-style french fries, so... So far, so good. All right, so I got a beer. This is called Stella Beer, Albanian. All right. There's the... Uh, Lamb chops, lamb ribs actually. Lamb ribs, Greek salad, fries, a beer. So far I'd say Tirana is made up for itself. I like it. Amazona. Okay, that was pretty good timing because the rain appears to have stopped. And it's beautiful out now. It's like a mild sauna. I'm amazed that this city only has 450,000 people. Like, very congested, very densely populated. I see lots of Mercedes around here. Like, 25% of the cars are Mercedes. Those are expensive cars gotta be money around here so previously I had talked about in a wild adventure that I had from Montenegro but then it was then compounded by the next day also having another wild adventure into Albania because I've been instead of flying because I'm trying to avoid flying I've been I've decided to go by land for the most part across the Balkans but I wanted to see it and do it you know well, the adventure was basically crossing a border, which is actually a pretty hectic situation. Just anytime you cross a border, especially if they need a stamp on your passport, that's immigration, that's hectic, lines, questioning, you know, and it's kind of intimidating to be honest with you. Then getting to the point where the lines were so long, the driver decided that he didn't want to have to stay, stay in lines the whole time, so he found me a new driver, thanks to, which I'm cool with because I understand why he doesn't want to wait in lines to get in and then wait to, to get in and out of the country because time is money, right? And he's, uh, he's driving on a flat rate, not on a meter. So, finds me a new ride. We're in, the, we're, in the, we're in this van, and then he gets a call saying that he needs to give up the van, so then we get in a Volkswagen. Okay, so everything seems cool. We get to the location, Couture, hang out, <clears throat> leave, go to a new place called Budva. Okay, so I, I basically say, okay, drop me off here. Well, I get there thinking that there's going to be hotels. Well, there's no hotels. Not a single hotel available. No vacancy. Not in the whole town of Budva, which is, is a nice place, but I was like, okay, no, no hotels. So I've been walking around with all my luggage for like an hour trying to find it, sweat dripping off my forehead. Then I find a hotel that's like nine miles away from where I'm currently at, at that moment. And going nine miles in Montenegro takes an hour. I mean, it could take a long time. It's windy roads up mountains and down hills and over hills. So I find this guy, he takes me over there, 
And I get there, and they, it's a beautiful hotel, but there's no restaurant. There's no food there. So I'm like, okay, what are we going to do here about this food? So then I have to walk on this road, like a highway, on the side of the highway, and you can't. There's no sidewalks. So you have to go through like this ravine and there's rose bushes. Like rose bushes that have like one inch thorns, literally. And there's no getting around it. Like in order to get to the hotel or to the restaurant, you have to cross through the area where there's rose bushes. It was only like 0.2 miles, not very far. But the thing was, it was like very rugged shrubs and rose bush with like thorns. So I get to the to the uh, restaurant. I've got like four or five different cuts on me from rosebush thorns and bleeding. And I'm just like, oh man, what the hell was today? I was like, that was the craziest day. So that's basically my story for crossing the border from Croatia to Montenegro. Well, the next day was equally as crazy without the thorns of the rosebush, but the border crossing. So overall, it's been an interesting 48 hours. It's not like I was like dodging gunfire or getting shot at or anything crazy like that. It's just the process, it's exhausting. It takes a lot out of you, but it's worth it. I mean, that's the adventure, right? I don't know. I just felt like people would want to know that if they were to try to do such a thing themselves, that that's the kind of stuff to expect. And even if you look on Google Maps, it will tell you that it takes three hours. No, 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 no. That's three hours with no traffic. It's really more like seven hours. And it's not like one area where there's traffic. Actually crossing the border into Albania from Montenegro, that wasn't even the, the longest line. The line right after we got into Albania it was probably like two or three hours of just waiting, stop and go traffic, just to go two miles. And that's painful. It's hot, it's humid. There's people panhandling or whatever you wanna call it. Anyway, I'm here. So tomorrow I go to what is supposedly a very small airport that is very crowded. <laughs> so I'm like, oh gosh. I've been really trying to get away from crowded airports. Those crowded airports, one off, you know, going one place, it's not too bad. If you just go one place and come back, I can handle that. But going to airport after airport after airport after airport, consistently it starts to wear on you to where you're like, you know what, no more airports. But then you do land border crossings and you're like, no more private cars. Then you do a bus, do too many buses I'd say of all of them my favorite is the train so I'm a big advocate for trains and I it, you could take that from someone who's done airplanes private cars buses trains I'm telling you ferry ferry boats I actually like ferry boats too but not every place has a boat it, it, if my preference is a boat like a cruise boat, like a ferry boat, or preferably with a with a lounge and a stateroom, someplace you can sleep, like a sleeper train or a sleeper ferry, overnight ferry. Those are the best. It's it's equivalent to flying first class and getting like a flatbed seat on the plane. You're not going to go the same distance, obviously, as fast. But you know, you, you get on a, a sleeper ferry, an overnight ferry from uh, Barcelona to Ibiza or Mallorca. You know, you leave at 11 and you wake up at six and you're in Mallorca <laughs> with a nice shower and brush your teeth and you're there and you wake up and it's a beautiful morning in Ibiza or Mallorca. Or same with the train. You get on a train going from Charlotte, North Carolina to New York City and you wake up 7 o'clock and you're in New York. You know, stuff like that. Anyways, I'm at my hotel. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this tour of Tirana. I know you didn't see everything, but hey, I did what I could for a tour. See you guys on the next one.